Hi guys, Jared here with Day Traders FX. I hope you're having a great week and you had a good weekend, got some rest. It is time to get back to the crazy markets that seem to never sleep, or at least too much. Um, quick little reminder, it's the start of the week. This is a good time to get a free trial. You can go to daytradersfx.com and get a free trial uh, to join us in our live trading room uh, all week long. So you can get it right here in the upper right-hand corner or right here below this video. This little video will give you a quick explanation of uh, just a little bit about the site and what we do. Okay, let's get right to it. Uh, U.S. markets pretty darn flat today. We're just about to close here in a 20 minutes or so. Dow is basically at zero. S&P is at zero-ish. Uh, nothing's really going too much of anywhere. So pretty slow start of the week. Uh, remember, we're starting to get out of the summer, or excuse me, out of the pre-summer movement and into just regular summer and so things can start to slow down a little bit and get a little sideways and a little low volume and all that stuff so kind of expect that to happen uh, as far as news goes today we have some uh, news uh, some Japanese news uh, press conference monetary policy statement coming into tomorrow uh, we have uh, the the a uh, little bit of German news and manufacturing production out of the UK so just kind of keep those in mind on our setups okay so a couple of things I want to look at the euro dollar just really quick and explain why I'm thinking about doing what I'm about to do and and a good reason behind it which hopefully there is one um, the euro dollar has rallied up very nicely to uh, one just about 13300 our high here is 133 about 05 let me just verify that real quick high 13305 um, so we just barely pushed above 13300 remember one thing that I thought was pretty important was the fact that these daily charts, these daily candles are having a little bit of a tough time opening above the the uh, high of May before we get this little you know pre-summer run down. Um, so I'm looking at the possibility of shorting the euro dollar against this high. Now if this candle opens above that high uh, then, then that could change things a little tiny bit but honestly not that much uh, because I still am looking to short uh, against the high of 133.05 and let me tell you why I'm doing that. Um, number one, we have a missed weekly pivot to start the week off. So we're off it by, you know, not, not, not a super long distance, but 10 or 12 pips at the lowest point. Uh, it came within 10 or 12 pips of that weekly pivot, and then it's rallied up quite a bit here. Uh, number one. Number two, we've got this short-term rally right here that's happened over the last week and a half or so. And right here is where I think the euro dollar, you know, has already opened below the 23% fib, and then it's rallying up once again into these highs here. And so what I'm looking to do is, remember, when we cross that 23% fib, the chance is the likelihood of getting back to that 38 are like incredibly high um, and so what we have to do is we have to trade against the highs that you know recent swing high or swing low points and this one happens to be 133.05 on the euro dollar so I'd like to get pretty close to that so I only have to have maybe a 25 maybe a 30 pip stop uh, um, against this 133.05 so that means you know we're looking for an entry possibly you know around 1 132 75, 85, somewhere in that general area with stops 5 to 10 pips above that high. And we're looking to trade all the way back down towards this weekly pivot, towards uh, 38%, towards the uh, um, 200 moving average. We're looking to just kind of, you know, recover this euro dollar just a little bit. If we get stopped out, then, then we'll look for the next leg of movement. But right now I'm pretty interested in shorting against that high. So that's kind of what I'm looking at on the euro dollar. Uh, quickly on the pound dollar, one thing that we've seen here is this pound dollar is actually staying in this this little channel pretty nicely. You can see the channel on the one hour chart is bumped along the bottom of that pretty well. Uh, and you know kind of followed up with a little bit of a triple bottom here you can see on this uh, short-term support and it's uh, it's rallied off of that by you know 80 pips or so it's broken a little short-term descending trend line here we talked about this in the UK session uh, and made a nice little move up um, I'm thinking that the pound dollar might give us a similar opportunity where we can trade back towards you know 154.25 154.30 uh, once we get a little bit closer to the high. So again, I'm interested in getting an entry, you know, within 25 or 30 pips of the high on this pound dollar uh, and shorting it back down towards that 154, you know, 100-ish area. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. It's just I'm, I'm currently looking to short against the high. So once again, I'm looking for short 
you know, small small profit or excuse me, small stop losses and larger profit targets. So if we can keep it in the 20 to 30 pip range on the stop loss and, you know, more like 50 to 80 pip on the profit target, obviously that's ideal, but I think we can actually do it pretty well with the euro dollar and pound dollar pairs uh, because of these setups. So on both pairs, I'm looking to short against the highs of last week. Uh, Aussie dollar is kind of moving around. This Aussie dollar, one interesting thing is, is it has reached the low uh, now of last, uh, when, when is this? This is uh, uh, October of 2011. So it's maybe finally going to bounce off that October low of 2011. It broke last year's low pretty easily, and now we're down to October or, or 2011 lows. Uh, so we'll see if that can hold. Uh, it may it may end up breaking. It may end up making a big movement for us. We'll see how that goes. But for the short term, uh, I think we might have a decent opportunity. Uh, it's just trading to kind of fill the gap. So as long as this pair can stay above this little opening area, which I'm looking at is about 94, 50, 55 area right around there, then I'm going to target this weekly pivot, and I think we'll have a nice little opportunity to kind of trade and fill that gap. So so that's that's just kind of short term what I'm looking for. But I'm not going to do a lot with the Aussie dollar. Uh, just yet. Uh, I'm kind of holding off on that, but again, I'm looking to trade and kind of fill that gap with that uh, as long as the pair stays above that 94.55 area. Um, now, pairs that are getting kind of wacky and crazy are Euro Yen and Pound Yen. Uh, we made some pretty fantastic trades on the Yen pairs last week, and I don't trade them a whole bunch, but now now I'm trading them uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit more because we've had such great trades and great movements on them. So I'm just keeping an eye on them for now because there is so much movement. Um, the the euro yen has done a couple of interesting things. Number one, uh, from this high right here um, to this low right here, uh, th th this takes us our this is our high of about three weeks ago, give or take. Uh, and it's a pretty large range. You can see that, that high to low range is about um, 750 pips. We've we've retraced all the way back to the 61.8. Now we've broken this descending trend line, but we're back to the 61.8. And at this point, I'm probably looking to buy on the dip. Now we have already reached the weekly pivot. That's all out of the way. And so this thing should be fairly free to continue pushing higher. We have this huge hammer on the daily chart. Uh, which is telling us that there's, you know, definitely some good reversal pressure there. So uh, that 61.8 seems to be holding the pair at bay pretty well. Um, a couple of things that I would look at would be either a break of this high because this is a reversal candle. Remember when we when we break those reversal candles and it's only 20 pips away, when we break those uh, markets tend to rally or you know tend to move through that uh, once broken uh, fairly well. So there could be a nice trade uh, above this weekly high 131. We'll say it's about 131.10 give or take. Uh, so look for a break of that. Otherwise, let's look for a dip and an opportunity to buy on the dip. Now, a couple of things we can look at on the shorter side here, on the sell side, is uh, this low to this high on the Euro Yen um, is, is giving us a few interesting points to, to watch for. Uh, if we get back below about 129.90 area, which is now you know a decent distance away, it's nearly 100 pips away, then I think we might be looking for a bit of a bigger move down towards that weekly pivot. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for. But if we stay below this reversal candle, then that's a pretty likely possibility of happening. Otherwise, we break this reversal candle and we're looking to get long uh, above 131.10. Uh, but uh, but again, if we stay if we stay below this and we can ultimately make our way below about 130, um, then then I think we've got you know a pretty decent run on the euro yen to the downside. I'm gonna have more details coming out on this. We're kind of watching it. There's no trade to be taken just yet. We're just kind of watching these details and seeing where they're going. Uh, very similar setup on the pound yen. Uh, the pound yen here, you can see, I'm just looking at this high to this low right here, and it's already pushed above the 61.8, so we're already above that. Uh, so now what I'm looking at on the pound yen is this opportunity right here. If we take a fib level from the bottom and go to this little double top up here, same kind of situation. You can see that everything kind of peaked out at these little resistances uh, and then you know rallied through that. So below about 152.75.80, 
again about 100 pips below, uh, then we have a pretty good chance I think of heading into you know 150 200 uh, and and potentially 151 uh, 20 30 area. So we got to stay below that high. Otherwise, on the longer term kind of move, we've broken this trend line and we may have an opportunity to buy on the dip. So if we get down to that 23% fib and we can't break it, that's going to be that's going to be support. If we can't break it, then that turns into a good area to buy on that dip as well. So it's really going to depend on a uh, if this high holds um, or not, B, if this low holds or not. And this low uh, that I'm referring to specifically would be uh, 152, uh, 75, 80 area. So again, more details coming out on Twitter. I'll post charts and, and have some reminders and some things that I'm looking at, but I think we really do have some great setups with some great profit potential. So stay tuned, guys. I'll have the details uh, coming throughout the day.